Hi guys, welcome to Jam again. It's another Friday night and this week we are going to be looking at week two of God's story um, focusing on Genesis and also thinking a little bit about those characters from Toy Story. Okay, so last week we thought about the beginning, about creation. God had made everything and we introduced a pretty perfect world. It sounded amazing that God had created all this lovely fruit and this lovely um, garden and trees and plants and food for Adam and Eve to eat and it all sounded pretty amazing. Okay, and the story continues in Genesis 2. It says, And God commanded the man, You must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat out of it, you will surely die. Now, God had created so many wonderful things for people to eat, and he just had this one rule. He placed them in this perfect garden and he said, however, don't eat from this one tree. What do you think happened next? I'm sure that some of you know the story. And unfortunately, something was about to get broken. Let's see if we can work out what it was. Genesis chapter three says, now the snake was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the snake, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. You will certainly not die, the snake said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. Then she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realised they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the snake deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the snake, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labour you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband. In Toy Story 2, right near the beginning, after the lovely scenes where Woody just is and um, Buzz are playing and Rex playing the computer game and it's just an ordinary scene, something happens to Woody. Andy's playing a game, playing with his toys and Woody's arm gets locked into Buzz's and then by accident, as Andy's playing, Woody's arm gets tugged a little bit too tight and the seam on his shoulder comes apart and Woody gets broken. And something happens after that. Andy's mum comes in and she picks Woody up and she says, oh dear, your toy's broken and she puts him up high on a shelf. Now Woody normally accompanies Andy out to school. He normally goes in his backpack off he goes wherever Andy's going, to school, to camp, to play with another friend. And that day, Woody gets left behind on the shelf. Now, at that 
point when Woody's damaged is through no fault of his own. He feels rejected. He's placed out of the way. He feels unloved. And he feels a whole load of things which some of you might have felt in your life. And some of you might even feel right now as you're watching this. Sometimes we get damaged because it's, and it's not our fault. Sometimes we get damaged and it is our fault. Like Adam and Eve, choosing, making a wrong choice causes us to feel hurt and rejected and damaged. But whatever the cause, God wants to heal our hurts. He wants to heal those that weren't our fault and also to heal the hurts that were your fault. He wants you to come close to him. God can also heal actual bones, our body, but he also wants to heal our heart when our heart has been broken. Have any of you ever broken a bone? I've broken a couple of bones in my life. I broke my little finger once at a swimming competition and I also, I broke my nose in a, a drama lesson at school because somebody else, their head, hard head banged into my nose and I had a big old nosebleed and my teacher took me to sit down and they called my mum and my mum took me to the hospital to have a look at my nose and they said, oh yes, I'm terribly sorry, she has, she had, Nikki has broken her nose and they said, however, in the time it took for me to sit still quietly and the school nurse to phone my mum and my mum to come in her car to where my school was and then just to get to the hospital and have to sit waiting. They said, what's happened is Nikki's nose has set again. It's now set in the way that it is. And they said, we can't really do anything to fix it without re-breaking the nose. Ouch. And I thought, I remember how painful it was the first time. I don't want it to be broken again, thank you very much. And the doctors looked at it and they thought, actually, the way that it has set is quite straight and it's OK. So if you actually notice, I've got a bit of a crooked nose. That's why, because I did once break it. And I chose not to have it rebroken to reset it really straight. But doctors, with the help of an X-ray, can look at a broken bone. And if it does need to be set straight, then they can do that for you. And often dealing with it quickly is the best way to fix something and it can stop any long term damage because if they hadn't, if it, if it hadn't been straight enough, they would have had to re-break it so that because otherwise it might have caused problems with me being able to breathe through my nose properly and things like that. And so doctors can prevent long term damage. But it's a bit like that with us, too, with things that have caused us hurt and pain, not necessarily with our body, but with things that have hurt inside. The quicker we deal with it and the quicker we go to God and say this is a problem, the quicker he can heal us. And, and when we think about our hearts being broken, we're not really talking about that kind of lump of flesh inside us. We're not talking about there being a problem with that, although people do have problems. People have heart attacks and the doctors need to help fix that with medicine. But we're talking more about our emotions and our feelings, aren't we? And I don't know if any of you have ever had your heart damaged, maybe by a friend who's let us down, maybe someone who said something unkind, or maybe some of you have even been a bit bullied, which is really unpleasant and a horrible feeling, and it leaves us inside with a pain. It's not something you can see, and it's not something that you can go to the doctors and they'll say, here you go, take this medicine two times a day, and your heart will soon feel better. This is something that can only be healed with kindness and asking Jesus to heal that hurt. And sometimes our friends and our family need to know if we're feeling like that because they can help us too if there's a feeling that's of a pain inside. But if we go back to our original story of what happened with Adam and Eve in Genesis, what do you think was broken then? Did they break a bone? Did they break the tree when they took the fruit? No, I don't think it was that. Did they break a rule? Definitely. They definitely broke God's rule, didn't they? But it was more than that. It was deeper than that. 
their relationship with God was broken. And our relationship with God has been broken because of the bad things that we do in our life. It might not be something actively we've gone out and done that's really horrible. Sometimes we, as humans, we categorise sin, don't we? We can make think, oh, this is a really bad sin, or that's a, that's a not so bad sin. But God sees sin all the same. It's all darkness, and it's all a barrier from us being friends with him. And always, when relationships are broken, people get hurt. But remember, it's God who can bind up hearts, bind up the broken hearted. It says in the Bible, he binds the hearts of those who are broken. And he can heal relationships as well as bones. All we need to do is ask him and let him do that healing. Now, I don't know if you have any broken relationships with other people. And maybe you do. And maybe you need God's help to fix maybe a friendship that you fallen out with a friend or something like that but we certainly also need to ask for his forgiveness for the things we've done wrong so that we can have a lovely relationship with him again too don't we and so i'm going to say a prayer for us now that god will help heal any broken relationships in in our lives dear god i thank you that you are the god of forgiveness and the god who can heal the brokenhearted i pray that you will forgive us our sins and have a start help us to have a lovely new relationship with you where that relationship is that was broken is now mended and new and help us if there are people in our lives who we've maybe fallen out with and we need to make friends with also lord we pray that you will bring healing to those situations and mend our hearts where they've been broken by other people too lord lord we trust in you amen that's all for today Uh, Don't forget you can watch the next episode of the Carlos story too that goes alongside this and next week we will be back for the third part of God's story.